A reading from our Gospel text. And he said to him, but he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone. And he said, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. And again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only shall you serve. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. That wily, slippery, lying, no good serpent. The devil in whom was there at the beginning of creation of the world. He was there lying, slithering, attempting to dissuade and persuade the Son of God. Even then, in heaven, he was tempting. That's why he was thrown from heaven. And then we see the devil in serpent form go to the created man and woman and tell them, you will not surely die if you eat of the fruit of the tree of, the, of knowledge. First he went to the woman, to Eve, and he says to her, look at the tree that is good for eating. There you will find sumptuous food that will not only feed your body, but will feed your mind. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil sounds like such a good thing. Today, we have wonderful, dedicated, and even, and especially during this time of COVID, absolutely dedicated teachers who teach our children, our middle school children, high school children, professors in college, and so on. But for what purpose? The purpose is to give them knowledge and the tools that they need to enter into the world and into the workforce. And so it runs against our understanding of knowledge when the serpent says, eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. To us, it's, it sounds like more knowledge is better. And that's true, except when you see that the serpent is tempting Eve to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good, which she already knew, and evil. Eve and Adam had no concept, no idea, and no knowledge of evil. They were created without the knowledge of evil, without the effects of evil. In other words, they could not die because they did not know evil. And yet again, here comes the wily, slippery, and lying serpent to say, eat of this tree. Doesn't that fruit look good? And I want to make this point perfectly clear. The answer is yes. The fruit looked good. The fruit was good for eating. Our text says, good for eating. And then Eve ate of it and like a dutiful wife, took it to her husband, and he ate of it, and all of a sudden, the serpent, the devil, grinned, for he had humanity right where he wanted us to be. 
knowing evil. And we see what, the, what happens right after the fall into sin. We pass the buck. Adam says to God, it was the woman whom you gave to me. He blames the woman first and then ultimately blames God for giving him the wife to begin with. Does that make any sense? It does to us on this side. We always pass the buck. We always put our faults onto others to shine a light on other people. My mother once told me when I was learning to drive that it doesn't matter how fast the other people are going. If you get pulled over, no cop's going to buy. They were going faster than I was. Why did you pull me over? And we do it all the time without thinking. We pass the buck around. The woman then blames the serpent and ultimately God. So we see that the devil's wily trick, his lying tongue, won that day. And yet we find in our Gospel text, when that serpent, that devil, took Christ, with Christ, tempted Christ with food, with the holy city, that he would throw himself down, ultimately testing God, and then taking him up on a high mountain to say, all of this will be yours if only you would fall down and worship me. Those three temptations. The same devil that was in the garden, it's the exact same devil that was tempting Christ. But I want you, dear Christian friends, to notice how Christ answers the devil. He does not say, go away at first. He doesn't say, oh, I, I, I'm the Son of God. I, I can do all of this. You can hang out, but I'm going to be the Son of God. And ultimately, on the cross, I will crush you and victory shall be mine. And through my victory, my Christians shall share that victory. No, He doesn't say that. He does what we should do. He does what we need to do, what we have to do. He answers the devil all three times with the Word of God. All three times. Satan says, if you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. Christ answers, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So then the devil takes him to the holy city and puts him on the pinnacle of the temple. This is not, uh, this is very significant. He puts him atop the temple that where people are worshiping him underneath. And he says, this is the, and this is an absolute test, throw yourself off the temple. Just throw yourself because the prophecy is that the angels will swoop in, minister to you, save you. And Christ answers, For it is written, He will command His angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. Jesus said, again, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And so the devil takes Christ up to a high mountain and has the arrogance, the gall, and truly the ignorance to say all of this, in other words, the creation that Christ created, all of this I will give to you if you only do one thing. Bow down and worship 
me. And Jesus said to him, Be gone, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Do you see that? Each and every time Christ quotes Scripture to the devil, it is written, it is written, it is written. And it, with each answer that he gives to the devil, that is the word of God, the devil begins to tremble, the devil begins to fear, and the devil eventually does this. Then the devil left him. And so it is for Christians. See, one thing that we have is Scripture. We have the Word of God. And we, and we certainly try to read, mark, and inwardly digest all of Scripture. We read it in our devotions. We read it in our spare time, or we should be. But have you ever thought of the Word of God as a weapon? As a sword to wield? As a dagger to plunge into the heart of the devil? That's what we have. As surely as the Son of God, the Word of God, according to John 1, was crucified and was risen, so He has put faith in us and He gives us the Word of God to speak against the devil. So when the devil comes to you, and we all know that he does, and he tempts you, perhaps not for fruit, but against God, that we would not honor our mother and our father, and those in authority, that we would murder, if not with a weapon, with our thoughts and deeds, that we would lust after those in whom we are not bound in holy matrimony, that we would covet all the things that are our neighbors. And of course, the one that we are very, 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 very good at not putting the best construction on our neighbor. We break all of those commandments and, this, and the evil serpent sees to it that we are tempted in every way to break those commandments. So when you break, those, when you break a commandment and you know that you have, pray. And then speak the word of God against the devil. Man shall not live by bread alone. He will command his angels concerning you. Be gone, Satan. You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. The word of God that was spoken to the devil, that plunged a heart into the devil, that word is yours to wield as well. And as long as you wield the Word of God, as long as you speak against the devil, the Word of God, He is afraid of you too. He is just as, he is just as, as afraid of us and we who yield the Word as He is Christ who is the Word. That's how powerful a weapon we have. If only we were to wield it. If only we were to tell Satan, Be gone, for I have a Savior who has crushed your head, and only He shall I serve. Be gone, Satan. I'll have nothing to do with you. For I have the Word of God. I've been baptized into it. I get to eat it and drink it. And you, sir, have no part with me or in me. You have no reason to be around me. Be gone back to hell, you horrible, horrible creature. And the devil has no choice. He goes 
because he's afraid of the word of God that you yield. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen.